Here you have one more. Hey guys! Uh, today I'm bringing you DMC Devil May Cry, and I'm actually not in a happy mood. In fact, I'm feeling pretty piss poor over it. You wanna know why? It's because of the way these fucking gaming journalists are acting. In, in fact, we're, we're gonna talk about a, a whole set of different parties that have just got my blood boiling. Um, and we're bringing this whole thing full circle. We're gonna talk about Hideki Kamiya, we're gonna talk about the fucking game journalist and what's wrong with the industry, and how they actually managed to ruin it for everyone. We're also gonna talk about how to tell a game if it's good or bad because of your particular perspective, what are your personal interests, and how to see things objectively. Alright, notice from the sound of my voice that I'm upset. I almost didn't want to play this game. In fact, here's the thing. I feel bad for the fact that my friend here bought the game for me, and I won't be doing this alone. This will be a dual commentary. And I'm really upset because the more I read about the articles of this game online, the more it, the propaganda turns me off. I You cannot always distance the creation from the creator, and... It's a. It's going to be a very difficult thing to explain. Uh, I'm going to introduce my friend here, Roberto. Just call me X Squad if you want. Huh? X Squad if you want. Uh, uh, but he also goes by the name X Squad. So you know, you guys are cool with it. Anyway, uh, dude, do you have anything to say, or do you want to hear from me first? Actually, I'll let you continue on, cause if there's any points that you're gonna get, uh, want to make, and uh, I'll give you a rebuttal for it, or anything you want me to help out with. I'll, get, I'll be there to help. Okay, because this is predominantly me, but I don't mind any secondary points. Anyway, my problem with this game isn't just the creation of it and the... And the... Uh, yeah, sorry. There was a buzzing sound in the background from a console. Anyway, it's not just the inception of the game. It's the people behind it. It's the staff and the way they conduct themselves toward the customer. And don't worry, we're going to be talking about the gaming journalist's attitude also, and Hideki Kamiya's attitude. I guarantee this discussion will finally come full fucking circle. Anyway, to start off with, the developers of this game are Ninja Theory, a development studio who only made two, three titles on the PlayStation 3. They made Heavenly Sword and Enslave, to the best of my knowledge. I have played them. I have personal experience with the games. Heavenly Sword, it's it, it's definitely combat oriented. It's fun, alright? It's very short, but enjoyable for your money's worth. $60 is a bit of a broken price point for all games, if you ask me. I've been saying this for days, and I'm saying it now, alright? $60 is not worth it for any game these days, alright? You could buy a fucking uh, new modeled car or an item in a store for a discount, especially around the holiday. Why should a game get an, a primary exception? In fact, why should the exception to, well, to that product be singular only? In other words, why is it that when a particular items such as clothing, such as children's toys, why is it that they can go for a discount on the holidays, uh, and what makes games so special that they can't be toned down a bit by 10 or 20 bucks, alright? And you people wonder why people are pirating this, or bought, or buying their games legally on the second-hand market, or renting it from Blockbuster or an online digital rental store? You people complain about the damnedest of things! Or at least these people who are acquiring their games second-hand are doing it legally. But now, with Sony's new fucking patent, trying to register it so that all games will have to be read, and will all virtually have to be new copies. This is their way of eliminating the second-hand market. Alright? And in fact, this game... I'm probably going to rent it, just to get some practice with it. But today, I'm not going to play like a casual gamer. I'm going to show you how to play it as a hardcore veteran of the DMC series. Particularly 3 and 4. And mind you, we're not going to go into the game just yet. This is a prelude video, so we'll just be here uh, talking about this game. And its background. For over three years, we've been waiting on this. Ever since that stupid CG trailer with Dante looking like a meth head and having battle scars everywhere. What were your thoughts on that, X-Squad? Oh my god, it, it was just horrible. I, I remember seeing that and I was like saying, oh my god, th th please don't tell me they're doing this. Please don't tell me they're doing this. And then I saw it. Oh god, no, 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 no. It, it was virtually, I was seeing a... I, they turned Dante into a drugged up you little emo kid. That's the first thought that came to my head. They turned him into a little drugged up emo kid. People didn't even know who he was. They thought he was a new character until he said his final lines at the end of the trailer. My name is Dante. And I was like, when I saw that, and then I saw him smoking on the roof, I, w I was mortified that 
mortified is a bit of an exaggeration, but I was pretty disgusted at what I had seen. I was like, okay, definitely I almost not threw up, me. actually, for that, in that comment. I almost threw up because of how horrible and how bad they portrayed it. It was repulsive and terribly constructed. And what made it worse is the fact that Capcom approved of this new direction and went through a hundred character designs just to come to this final decision. And then afterwards, when the public relations guy, Tamim Antoinades, I think he, was, he is the creative director on this game, he was asked, what, like, what if people were angry about the new design and the new atmosphere, the new tone that the game's direction is going in? And he said, he, he was smoking, he took the cigarette out of his mouth, and he said, I don't care. Like, he didn't care about what the fans thought. And my friend, Main Event, he's been covering this for over two years now, and that was the first thing he started with. In fact, I looked on various websites independently to see if it was actually true, because I have never heard of a developer being such an asshole about a particular character and series, and and belittling them because they think, oh, the character doesn't have white hair, uh, things are going to go downhill for the worst. No. It's not about the fucking hair, alright? It never really was. In fact, you can play this game right now with white hair Dante. Here's a question you should be asking yourself. Is it the same character? Is it the same soul? Is it the same dialogue as the original? Is he campy? Is he fun? Even if you have white hair uh, coated or, or the Devil May Cry 3 outfit of Dante coated onto this character in this title, you're still not going to feel that. Virtually in the end, you can just say it as it is. This is not Dante! This is just a crappy make of him that really, if anything, I, I'm literally hoping at the very end, there's like a scene that you see is Dante waking up in a cold sweat, Trish ta going to him and asking him what the hell's wrong, and he, and he says, I said the worst fucking nightmare you would not believe. You know, they have made so many Facebook photoshops of that, like, that has gone around so long, like, it's not a dead joke to me, in fact, I still find it pretty hilarious because of how everyone's reacting to this game. And I don't blame them personally, because here's the thing about games. You can choose to play them, or you can choose not to. Alright? First thing we want to make clear about that. You should not belittle anyone for their desire over a game you don't like. Alright? We get it. I get it. I, in fact, if you have seen my track record of YouTube videos, when did I ever fucking tell you that if you wanted to play the game that you're a terrible person, and that you disgust me, and you should be shunned for it, alright? I have never made a fucking statement. In fact, you're welcome to try and archive through my previous comments or my video clips. And trust me, I have called idi people idiots before in the past, but not, not for this reason. This reason is just that this game should not even be called Dead May Cry. In fact, I think a lot of people, <laughs> I'm sorry, I think a lot of people would take kindly to the fact, to a possibility that if it were its own intellectual property, uh, it might be enjoyable. Yeah, it would but be fun. if you're trying to make a revamp of a, I'll just put it as this way, a character who was badass, who could throw out combos, who made you feel like all powerful, the original first hack and slash pro. And who can make you laugh. Yeah, like literally make you ha laugh. Have a story that's not just, oh, it's flash bang, it's big tits. No, it actually has substance. There's actually, if you actually pay attention to it, there's a few hidden things that you don't really know unless you think about it. And you just give it this. Oh, a but wait, but X-Squad, remember the scene when Trish was dancing in Devil May Cry 4 like Lady Gaga? Remember when we, see, when we used to see her naughty parts when we nearly did? I guess what? I didn't like it then either. In fact, I thought it was too forced. Personally, uh, it wasn't even Trish herself. It was just a disguise. Like, the whole argument of having sex or sexual over like tones or overtones in this game, it doesn't appease to me. I'm not a 12 or 13 year old boy who can't get, who can't get a real woman but instead settles for yeah. a Playboy magazine. Yeah, virtually this is, in that one, I understand they kind of forced it a little... But in the first three, if you actually know the first three alone, there are some sexual moments, but they're decent. They're virtually... They're, 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 they're implicit. Yeah, they're implicit, they're flirty, they're a good back and forth between the both characters. Exactly. It doesn't, and, it doesn't try too hard to shove it in your face. Uh, we're going to pick up a save file, so just go in anyway. I'm pretty sure it's not going to go to the main screen. Yeah, the samurai weapon has been granted to you. Anyway, um, actually, let me see what we can do. Check out the extras for a bit. Hmm? Yeah. Training? Extras. 
you know, we're gonna take a look at some things throughout the game, but we're not just gonna leave it on a black screen, alright? We intend to go for a little bit. Okay, the thing with this game is that it's not all it's cracked out to be, based on all the user reviews I have heard from, alright? I mean, we've had the Brotherhood of Gaming streaming this particular st uh, game with its storyline. We have had multiple reviews from IGN, Kotaku, Machinima, all of the big wigs, all of the big names in gaming that for some reason people seem to depend on to get, uh, to, uh, to even have a voice to begin with. People behave as though for some reason if they were not a part of the industry, we would all be worse off. That is not true. In fact, it's their biased fanboyism that extremely gripes me. Because these people are supposed to be standing up for you. These people are supposed to un try and sympathize with your complaints, even though they have a personal preference themselves. Where do, you, where do these people get off belittling you talking about being a hater because of a character redesign? Because a color of a particular segment is not to your liking, alright? Where the fuck do you get off writing articles, denoting, or belittling the customer, the people who are on your forums and registered to your websites and watch you work? You know, those people who are paying attention to you, they, co they are considerable for your ad revenue, you assholes. <sighs> and if you want, I actually have a few alternative choices to the main mainstream, mainstream, mainstream people who come out. In fact, it's, it's embarrassing for me to call them mainstream gaming, because this is actually, this is probably a the part of the is... bottomless pit of screw-ups that the gaming journalists have committed by turning fans against each other and thriving off this shit. Here's about, I'll give you so far, how about three new places you can try? You could try, um, Game News Official, Zoom In Games, and if you're thinking of somebody else, you also could try, eh, Rum and Games HD. Here's what they're they're pretty much obscure, but they do get a good coverage and they do care about the fans because they're also fans. Yeah, but are they, here's my question though: Are they assholes to anyone who writes on YouTube about uh, no, this they're particular not. game? They're not. They actually do review on game. They actually do the go to the uh, actual cons. They do show show up. And for my personal favorite, Zoom in Games, they actually do. Over time, their own comparisons. Okay, because I just showed my friend X Squad here a review by Adam Sussler, a guy who worked on G4 and again attacked the fans of Mega Man Legends 3 way back in the network. In fact, he doesn't even like to talk about those days. It seems like he's trying to distance himself from them. Now he actually wrote up an honest review about DMC Devil May Cry with both pros and cons, things that people will dislike, feel uncomfortable with, outright hate, and some things they will enjoy. And the game is fun to some degree based on what he, the contents of his video up, up say. Alright, I'm not the best, I admit, I'm not at the best at commentating or talking about this, but this is enough to make my blood boil and to get me angry because I feel like no one is saying something. In fact, Everyone is behaving as though the gamers are nothing but children and the journalists are required to be the supervisors. In fact, that children cannot go unsupervised when it comes to this industry. I have seen this notably with all these reviewers. Let's check the scores, alright? Because we have all these 8s, 9s, and 10s going out, and there's a particular peculiar pattern that I am noticing from different outlets. You could say something if you want, X Squad. Well, there's virtually gonna be a million reasons you wanna, you just wanna do all this stuff, but I can't. Just, I really can't focus on it right now. There's just so many bad ones, so many. In fact, the only people that seem to be looking out for each other nowadays are the actual consumers themselves. In fact, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna link Main Events TV uh, YouTube channel below. And I'm going to show you a list of all of his videos. I'm going to link all of them regarding this game and his take on it. You don't have to agree with him, but he is going to show you uh, knowledge and proof about what works and what doesn't work in this game. Just from the demo alone. And if you don't want to play this game, you don't have to play it, alright? I honestly can never re condemn anyone who doesn't want to try it out. There's a secret to all of these uh, reviewers and magazine and 
uh, website outlets acting the way they are. And I know it sounds like I'm reading from a script, but I'm freaking not. I'm saying this from the heart right now because I'm really ag like a little bit agitated by this and what the, uh, the community has reduced themselves to, unfortunately. Uh, anyway, we're seeing scores all around, left and right. I'm going to read you the first one, the DMC reviews. Here we go. IGN, 8.9 out of 10. Game Trailers, 8.5 out of 10. 1UP, an A. Eurogamer, 8 out of 10. GameSpot, 8 out of 10. Destructoid, 9 out of 10. Games Radar, 4 out of 5. Game Informer, 9 out of 10. Kotaku, recommended. Rev 3 Games. Alright, there's a difference between Rev 3 Games, and that's the one Adam Sessler is on. Everything else, notice how there's a peculiar pattern with two elements in play. Oh, and there, first, we have the problem of all of these scores being very similar and the timing of them. Do you want to know when these scores came out? All of them? Actually, I a, would. A day before the, this game's release. You know what that suggests? That Capcom may have been behind the release of these scores near the last moment in order to try and influence uh, uh, buying decisions. Even further than just having reviews influence your choice. Virtually, it's another addition to the conspiracy of, oh, are they actually bribing these people to make these scores a little bit better than they should be? In fact, we've heard a lot of this crap before that, uh, like, for one example I remember is that a GameSpot reviewer was fired because he refused to give a game a perfect score or something like that because he gave it a 7.5 and I think it was a Ratchet and Clank title, I'm completely unsure. But we've we've heard this crap time and again uh, about reviewers getting paid and bought off. And not just that, also being accommodated to parties by going out with them and drinking and, like, and before the game is even completely, in, like, complete, finalized in development. I mean, we've heard these stories before. Even if I, if I don't describe them accurately to the last word, I'll at least post them in the description below so that you can have a read. Personally, I don't think it's my job to cover everything. I think that I can at least give you an idea of what might be of interest to you and give you that piece below. It's up to you whether you want to read it or not, but I'm going to try 100% at least. I'm going to aim for it to be able to be as accurate and clear as possible. Alright, so yeah, there's a problem with all of these review scores coming out in the same day. Not only that, every time people comment, yes, I can see the vitriol, I can see the hatred. They're upset about the fact that all of these forms of media have for, for seemingly unified to try and tell off anyone who questions them. We've seen this with Capcom before, when they block people from their Facebook, they block people from their YouTube accounts, and don't you tell me that I haven't been. I have been on their streams. You want to know what the first time I got kicked out of Capcom's uh, streaming interviews? Yes, I would. When Mega Man Legends 3 was canceled over the summer of 2011. All right, Everyone got angry with them for, for more than just that reason alone, but that was one of them. You want to know what I got kicked out for? I'll tell you. It was because I asked two questions. One, why did they cancel Mega Man Legends 3? And two, why didn't they put enough money, funding, and resources into that game as opposed to this rebirth? Why did they feel it was necessary to go in this direction? A and they kicked me out. All right, I didn't two simple questions. Yes. Yeah. Two honest, simple questions they could have posted to answer so many others. And he got recognized for that? In fact, they cherry-picked certain... Uh, certain like inquiries like what's the character's name oh it's dante uh how many missions are there gonna be there i have 20 all right the first one is very accurate because uh, uh, if you can go back again i'll link those in the description below you can play them for a few minutes to, uh, and i don't know if it counts as music to your ears or if you really want to dive in for proof yes it's there they answer blunt questions and denounce and demonize anyone attempting to deliver to play hardball basically Just more proof showing is they really don't want people to know what the fuck they're really doing with your money and what they're doing with all the shit behind the scenes. In fact, not only have I talked about the reviews from, again, the big publications with strong names, but here's what I have also noticed after diving into Metacritic. The critic reviews have given them positive re have given them a positive score, positive outlook. 
let's take a look. We're not going to read it all to you, but we are going to tell you the names of all of these critic reviewers who have contributed to this website. Giant Bomb, they gave it a score of 100. PlayStation Universe, they gave it a 90. Sixth Access, they gave it a 70. All of the positive scores are highlighted in green, while 70 and below is about a yellow. Game Informer, a 90. In fact, let's read some of the descriptions, actually. Game Informer, a reboot is a chance to revitalize a flagging series, and Ninja Theory have done that with a striking vision for the DMC universe and top-notch combat. Gaming mm. XP, Dante is back. At times, the gameplay may be a little monotonous, but there is speed and atmosphere to be found in DMC Devil May Cry. The new style sits well on Dante and Combi Crisp's soundtrack perfects the return of the arrogant demon hunter. IGN, it should be noted, with a certain severity, that the 360 version is clearly superior in this pair. It is the PS3 counterpart that struggles to keep a steady frame rate, which is sadly uncharacteristic of PS3 games running on the Unreal Engine. Okay? First of all, you should not even be playing this game on the Unreal Engine, and someone's going to tell me, oh, they use it for everything nowadays. No! For Devil May Cry 4, they used the MT framework, and the game looked beautiful, and the combat was great. Why is it that you can't have great graphics with accommodating gameplay? Hmm. All right, let's keep let's keep going, shall we? Digital Spy. With the narrative that may have been stripped back, the same can't be said for the combat system, which is more complex than ever, but crucially never overwhelms. It gave it a score out of 80, and again, highlighted in green. Uh, PlayStation? But from what? what I know, the combat is very, so I say, shallow. It's very dumbed down, and I've played this demo hundreds of times looking for different techniques. Uh, again, it's absolutely downgraded, if you ask me. Well, when we start playing the final version, we'll know for sure if they actually fix that or not because if they didn't this game is virtually a cakewalk to any hardcore gamer the, fan. the public relations have been a nightmare we're gonna go into part two and talk about it